If you're already familiar with the Andrea Estella, it may not look as if a huge amount has changed for 2016, but in actual fact, an awful lot's going on underneath the skin. Weights are down by an enormous 175 kilos, although it's still a pretty hefty machine at 18.25 kilos if you've got it fully laden. It's also, more crucially, now a four berth rather than a two berth. But you still get the same fantastic looks with those silver sidewalls, the rather natty roof rails, alloy wheels, and bags of kit, heavy duty steadies, and an Alco ATC trailer control system. I also like the fact that it's got plenty of good external lockers with neat little tags that hold them open when you lift them up. There's one here to get under the bed box, a large one at the front, and round the side, a neat little vertical locker that makes use of a gap in the kitchen space. But what's most interesting about this van is how it feels when you get aboard. So let's do that right now. Now, I always like to start in the lounge, which usually means I'm sitting in the front of the caravan. But in this case, I'm sitting in the middle in this wonderful lounge with an armchair here on the near side, which is the perfect place to sit back and enjoy a book. And then a communal lounge area on the other side with a big solid table and this rather natty leather upholstery which is the only option fitted to this particular example. I love the detailing in here. This little lamp that swings out from the sidewall to give the perfect nighttime illumination for an intimate meal or even a board game. It's just a really lovely space to be in. There is one slight drawback however. Now at the beginning I mentioned the fact that this is now a four berth van. Well those second two berths are made up from the lounge sofas and it has to be said it doesn't make the biggest or indeed the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. You also have to find somewhere to store this rather hefty table at night but as long as your touring is a twosome it really is a spectacularly luxurious space and there's masses of storage in here, huge overhead lockers and bags of space in the bed boxes despite one of them being taken up by a 40 litre onboard water tank and here beside me there's an enormous wardrobe. A welcome to my boudoir. Now there's two layouts available for the Estella. The Rio Grande, which has a near side fixed double, and this, the Amazon, which has got these two simply massive single beds. They really are huge, really comfortable, and generous in both length and width, which is very unusual, and is made possible by the fact that this van is pretty enormous. It's well over eight meters long if you include the hitch, and a whopping 2.48 meters wide. This is not a caravan for amateurs to tow with. And let's face it, you're gonna need a pretty massive tow vehicle anyway. But there's loads of space in here, storage underneath each bunk, more storage overhead. It really does feel like a hotel bedroom rather than a caravan. And as for the ensuite, well, that really is luxury. There's a TV facing you, and each bed has its own lovely little lamp, although it does lack a shelf, so there's nowhere to put your cup of tea or book. Taking up the whole back of the van, it has a shower on one side, which although it doesn't have a one-piece liner, has some delightful mood lighting and a neat fixed towel rail. There's a bowl sink with a mirror behind and plenty of storage options, while the loo even has a little fixed toilet brush in a chromed holder. And if you like your privacy, you'll appreciate the fact that there's a proper frosted window. And for me, this kitchen really is saving the best to last. I mean, look how bright it is. This colossal skylight brings plenty of light into here. Often the cook in the caravan can feel like a bit of an afterthought, but here you're made to feel really special by your kitchen's position right at the front of the van. There's some great detailing as well. Check out this cupboard, which at the moment is shelved, but you lift up the shelf, prop it out of the way, and it makes an additional wardrobe. There's also these fantastic drawers they're simply enormous, with built-in dividers for all your cutlery. I really love that. And also, nice soft clothes action. Over here we've got grocery baskets. And remember I told you about that neat external locker? Well, that is beneath this huge area of worktop, making use of a space that you can't access from inside the van. There's loads of room to store stuff here and also do a bit of food preparation. Adria, as ever, has fitted this rather neat one-piece sink and hob unit. There's only three rings, but they're well spaced, so you can actually get three pans on them. And of course, if you make any spills, they run down and land straight in the sink and can be washed away. I really like that, it's a great touch. There's a separate oven and grill mounted here above the fridge. 
but as my wife pointed out, it's fine for me, it's not so great for her. At five foot, she can't even reach the grill pan, so it really is a little bit out of reach for some. But overall, what a great space. There's even somewhere to put your wine bottles just here. One last thing. Shouldn't every caravan have a built-in step? It just seems so logical. Now the Estella does remain a pretty niche product in the UK, and that's largely because its layout is fairly unusual in the UK market, a market more familiar with front lounges and central kitchens. That said, the fixed twin beds feel just like any other British van with that layout. And it's worth bearing in mind price. Now I mentioned earlier on that this wasn't a caravan for beginners, and that's true because it's very heavy, but it's also pretty expensive at a shade over £24,000 or a little over £25 with that optional leather. Now that seems a lot of cash, but if you bear in mind that the kind of rivals it's up against cost nearly £30,000 or even more, it looks like phenomenal value for money.